I've been looking forward to this one right here. Solitude and Mystery, Shroud of Town, right in our backyard. You might never have heard of it because it really almost doesn't exist anymore. Glastonbury is only nine miles north of Bennington, but has no local government and really barely any residents. It has no shortage of stories, however, from the serene to the strange there. Several weeks ago, Matt Markham took a break in the southern Vermont mountains to get to the bottom of what makes this place one of a kind. Not many places in the eastern United States appear as lonely as this. Cold winters feel even colder in the deep woods of Glastonbury, Vermont. Linda Gallagher is one of eight, yes, eight residents. I think it's an extremely unique place. Um, we've traveled around a lot. I don't know if I've ever seen another place that's quite like this because of the history of it. Geographically, the town is rugged wilderness. In the late 1930s, the state unincorporated Glastonbury. It's only government now, one resident appointed supervisor. Here's a little a settlement that had been prosperous and populated, and suddenly now it's abandoned. Which, which gives it the, um, you know, the name of a, a ghost town. Tyler Resch wrote the book on Glastonbury's history. Timber logging and charcoal production put the town on the map, even though Glastonbury was really a whole other world. And it was very much like a, a, a cowboy town out west, and very much uh, a young man's place. It was not very many women. It was kind of a wild place. There was a hotel, busy kilns burning, the fruits of the forest, but once the trees were gone, so were the people. Linda has some of the only remaining reminders that this desolate mountain once boasted a busy town. The uh, original house was the town hall, and um, we believe it's around circa 1830. But what adds to Glastonbury's mystique is mystery. There have been several unsolved murders and disappearances in this area, including one which led to the birth of the Vermont State Police. Paula Weldon who disappeared in December 1946. The young Bennington College student took a winter hike in the mountains. Her body was never found, despite a search. It had been in the hands of uh, the sheriff and uh, the state's attorney, and there were some questions about, you know, the quality of, uh, of the search and so forth. One year earlier, another person just vanished. A guy named Mitty Rivers, he was uh, deer hunting in the fall, and he disappeared. No body was ever found, no, nobody was ever accused. It's extremely windy here. We get winds that change direction constantly. So I can understand how someone might get lost up in the woods. At the same time, claims of the supernatural in a so-called Bennington Triangle add to the ghost town storybook, UFO sightings among them. Linda might believe it, and the thought that her hidden hamlet might not be isolated at all. Just some odd lights in the sky a couple of times, but uh, nothing that lingers. I'm, I keep looking for Bigfoot, but I haven't seen him yet. If you have an interesting story off the beaten trail you'd like us to check out, send me a note at mpmarkham at cbs6albany.com.